but Wang Jian Li was believed that if you looked at a photograph of a martial arts person, you could tell from various points about their appearance whether or not they were good. Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to talk about Jean-Claude Van Damme, how he got cast in No Retreat, No Surrender, and why he was not in the sequel, No Retreat, No Surrender 2. Anyway, my guest on today's episode is Bay Logan. You can follow him on Facebook. If you want cool kung fu memorabilia, check out his website, realeast.com. It's R-E-E-L East.com. All that information is linked in the description below. And if you want to see more Jean-Claude Van Damme content in the future, please help support the channel by hitting the like button, subscribing, sharing the video. And also, if you want to smell amazing, get this Black Belt Fragrances, Cologne, or Perfume. All that information is linked in the description below. I'll get you a huge discount. With that said, let's get on to this discussion about Jean-Claude Van Damme. And this gentleman knew everybody in Hong Kong and actually sent the information on Jean-Claude to Golden Harvest for um, potentially Jackie to fight. But... Um, I think Jackie thing at that time, what they used to do is they would go to Pat Johnson in America and whoever Pat Johnson recommended would be the guy that would fight Jackie. Because Pat Johnson introduced Keith Vitale, Benny Aquides, Richard Norton, okay. Bill Wallace. So I think John Claude did really get a look in. And then of course, when he did get a breakthrough, it was in, to all intents and purposes, a Hong Kong film. I mean, No Retreat, No Surrender, it's just it was shot in English and it has a white guy lead, but it's really a Hong Kong film. It was financed by CU and directed by Corey Yun. And um, that was another film where um, the story I heard from Roy Haran was that the, they were looking to cast the villain for No Retreat, No Surrender. And uh, Jean-Claude sent some photos in and uh, he showed them to uh, Huang Jian Li. And Huang Jian, you, you know who Huang Jian Li is, right? The, the drunken master, the kicking bad guy in that is a Korean gentleman called uh, Huang Jian Li. Here's some interesting background on Huang Jian Li. He has a reputation as being a super kicker in film, as is made evident from the dozens of movies from the 1970s to the mid-90s that he's appeared in. But what's more interesting is that he's known for his powerful and deadly kicks off-screen as well. Huang Zhang Li is a former Taekwondo instructor for the South Korean Army who helped U.S. Armed Forces during the Vietnam War. Huang actually killed a Vietnamese soldier who was apparently a knife expert that challenged him to a fight. The soldier claimed that the knife was superior to any form of unarmed combat and an argument soon followed where the knife expert challenged him to prove himself, at which point he declined to fight. Story goes, Huang Zhang Li went to turn his back and the guy lunged at him, but Huang quickly turned and launched a hill hook kick to the man's temple, killing him instantly. And he was also the teacher of Roy Haran, and Roy Haran was head of production at, or sales at least, at seasonal films, and involved with the making of um, the first No Retreat, No Surrender. And he showed the photographs of John Claude to... Wang Jian Li. And Wang Jian Li was believed that if you looked at a photograph of a martial arts person, you could tell from various points about their appearance whether or not they were good. Hmm. That's what he said. And he looked at these pictures of John Claude and said, no, this guy has really good um, techniques, very clean, very strong, very good techniques, and he'd be good to be the bad guy. And that's kind of how he got cast. So I think we can say he did start off in Hong Kong. Now expanding on that, Keith Strandberg, who was not only the writer but also second assistant director at No Retreat, No Surrender, talked about the initial casting for Kurt McKinney and Van Damme's roles in the film. He said, When we were casting the lead roles for No Retreat, No Surrender, we held an open casting call on the lot of Rayleigh Studios. We expected to see about 30 or 40 people and were totally unprepared for the hundreds of people that showed up. They were all lined up outside the building, standing in the hot sun. We had put in an ad for several very specific types of people, mostly young, but the line outside was all different kinds, old, fat, balding, etc. Very few of the people waiting outside were right for the parts we were casting, and we definitely didn't have time to see everyone that was waiting. So I was nominated as a person who would weed out the undesirables and choose the people to come into the office. What a job and what a responsibility. I walked up and down that line, looking at the people and trying to keep in mind that I couldn't feel sorry for them. I had to just choose people based on how they looked, something that I had been taught not to do most of my life. It was probably one of the toughest jobs I've ever had to do in the movie business. I felt sleazy as I picked the people we wanted to see, and the looks of disappointment on the faces of the ones I didn't pick really got to me. 
This is the one side of the business I don't like, having to choose one person over another. In a perfect world, everyone should get the parts they want, but it just doesn't work out that way. Now, going back to what Bay Logan said about Roy Haran showing pictures to Huang Zhongli, which obviously would have made a great impression, the filmmakers still had to meet and see Van Damme move in person. Van Damme said, I came to a casting session in a karate school. I came to show my physical skill and there were these three Chinese guys sitting at the end of the room at a table, almost like a jury. It was American Idol type stuff. Casting director Paul Maslick said, with Jean-Claude, he came in and he's just so physically impressive immediately when you see him. He's just physically impressive. And because of his ballet training, his leaps were terrific. First, I just had him do kata-like moves, whatever he wanted. He showed leaps and he showed some kickboxing style shadow boxing. And then I had him spar under very controlled circumstances with one of He Ilt Cho's black belts. And I did this with all of the fighting people. And then of course, they wanted him to do uh, the second one, Raging Thunder, in Thailand. And John Claude weaseled out of that, didn't want to go to Thailand, and never made the second film. Hmm. And you see you and the producer being the nice guy that he is kind of let him off. Screenwriter Keith Sandberg said, All I know is I got a frantic call from the president of seasonal film to tell me that neither Kurt nor Jean Claude showed up in Thailand for the first day of shooting. He's not going to show. As it turned out, Jean Claude got the part for Bloodsport, so he broke our contract to make that picture. Son of a bitch. And Kurt decided that he didn't want to work for Roy Haran, so he stayed away. It really hurt the company at the time because we had a complete crew in Thailand waiting for the lead actors but they scrambled and were able to find replacements, Lauren Avedon for Kurt's role and Matthias Hughes for John Claude's. Which, uh, gave, which, gave, which gave us, uh, I think, hands down, the nicest guy in the industry, Matthias Hughes. I don't know of a nicer man than Matthias. Oh, really? Let me tell you my Matthias Hughes story. I mean, sure. well, first of all, I know him in passing, but we met again on a crosswalk in Venice or near, near the Lowe's Theater doing AFM. And he stopped me and we're chatting and he said, yeah, I've got this place in Bali. Um, and he says, I'll tell you where I leave, leave the key. So if you ever go there, you can stay in my place. That really is the, that wow, is cool. the kind of guy that Matthias is. No, it's, I'm, I'm not word of a lie. The nicest man that you could ever hope to meet. Just gentle and sweet. And uh, have you had him on your show? No, you should get him on. He, I'm sure he has a lot to share. I'm sure he's he does. Guy. I've seen some of his movies back in the day, of course, in the 90s. Um, right. Yeah, big guy. Bigger than Dolph Lundgren, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 was, it, was, it was so funny because when they, when, um, they were going to do that second film, Raging Thunder, um, basically, Jean-Claude didn't want to go to Thailand. And he was like, listen, why can't they make it in L.A. like they did last time? And I think he wanted to save money by shooting it in Thailand. Mm. And so Jean-Claude convinced... Um, uh, the star of No Retreat, No Surrender, Kurt McKinney, mm -hmm. that this was a war zone and they shouldn't go. And Kurt McKinney just got married, so they both didn't go. So then Mthea and said, well, forget it. We'll just find new people. And he had Roy Haran again in L.A. And Roy Haran called up Jun Chong's studio and Lauren Avedon answered the phone. And basically they said, we're looking for a guy, six foot something, good looking, can do martial arts and act. And Lauren said, I'm the guy. <laughs> and that was him. <laughs> And um, with Matthias, I think they went out to Gold's Gym and they just said at the door, is there anybody European, very tall, very well built, um, who knows some martial arts? And then somebody pointed to Matthias and it was like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. What a, what a way to get cast. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> in 1987, Huang Zhongli trained Matthias Hughes in preparations for his film debut as Yuri the Russian in No Retreat, No Surrender 2. Prior to this, Hughes had no martial arts experience but enjoyed the training so much that he would continue training in martial arts throughout his career. 